Hello, everyone. I hope that you guys are having a wonderful Friday. I'm Kim Jacobs, The Balanced Doctor, and I am excited to come on here for us to talk about some things that you might want just some basic answers to. As The Balanced Doctor, I enjoy helping people and helping people from all walks of life. I've had people that reach out to me and ask for advice regarding uh, church, regarding children, regarding marriage, regarding dating, regarding divorce, regarding all manner of things that people are dealing with, ranging from their career to being able to balance things like how do they balance being a mother and still going back to being in school? How do they balance being able to take all of their children to all of these different extracurricular activities and being in school themselves as an adult student? It's so many different questions that just constantly permeate through a lot of different people and they're they're bringing them to me to ask for clarity on how they can operate in all of these different areas in life. So I thought it would be great to come on and just do an Ask Kim segment to find out what are some of your pressing questions? What are things that you're dealing with, especially with the whole coronavirus outbreak thing and people are now home and that's a whole different element. You're home with your children, you're home with your spouses, you're home with your adult parents in some regards. Life is very different as we know it from what we've known. And so you may have some questions that finally, whoosh, I get a moment to take a breather and I can ask some of my pressing questions that I've kind of always wanted to know how to handle some of these things. So there's no formal strategy here as to how you can pose your questions. You're welcome to put your questions in the comments section, or you can just inbox me, which I will look and check to see what questions may be in my inbox as well, because not everyone wants to put their comments or questions publicly, but they still want the answer. So none of this is, if, if, as I answer the questions for you, I'm not going to say your name unless it's a question that you type right here in the comments section for all to see. But if it's a question that you would like to have answered on the Ask Kim segment here on the Kim Jacobs Show, and you know I'm the balanced doctor already because many of you that are following me here know this already, then definitely feel free to inbox me and I won't say, oh, this question came from this person in my inbox, okay? Unless you say, please say it came from you. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in and find out how I can help you. And if it's not any major questions, then this session will be very brief because I'm only going to answer questions that are not staged questions, but questions that really come in that are questions that you guys may have that's just pressing on you that you'd like to get some answers to. So let's go ahead and get started and see what some of the questions are. See anybody? I have to go to my inbox here. But if you have a question already and you know you have one, please feel free to ask your questions. And yes, okay. So someone someone wants to know how can I manage my time because I don't seem to be able to get a lot accomplished in a day in a given given day or time frame is what they're saying okay so how do you how do you be able to get a lot accomplished and when it's like you don't feel like you're getting a lot accomplished in a given day well first of all I'll let you know we all have 24 hours in, in the same day all of us so you have 24 hours I have 24 hours it's just a matter of what we do with those 24 hours that determines the outcome of our day and whether we feel it was productive or whether we feel it was like, where did time go? I just don't feel like I got anything accomplished today. What I recommend is really highlighting what are the top three things or top five things. It depends upon how many things you have to get done that day, but really highlighting what are the things that you must accomplish that day. So the order that I put things in when I'm writing them down, which I write literally everything down, I put it in order of priority. So I actually will say that priority number one, this is something I must get done no matter what happens throughout the day, I have to get this accomplished. And if I go to bed tonight and didn't get this accomplished, then I feel like I didn't 
and just had a very unproductive day. So I put that at the top of my list. And then I order, I kind of force rank it. And it works lovely for me because the things that I intended to get done that day that were must do's for me, I get those things accomplished. And things that can wait until tomorrow or next week sometime, I push those further down, but I still put them on the list. And then at the end of the day, I push those over to like my priority for the next day. But let me be clear too, that there are times that I've put things that are on my lower priority list and I move it over as a high priority for the next day. But by the next day, it's no longer the high priority. So there are times when I think something's going to become a high priority for the next day and more things come into the mix that now force rank it even further down. So you have to have some level of flexibility when it comes to you being able to manage your schedule because all you want. And it depends upon your philosophy in life. For me, I can only tell you my philosophy anytime I'm sharing some things with you personally. I know that my, my, my life is subject to change by the leading of God. So I 100% am subject to his leading as well. And so everything that I do is like, if it's the Lord's will, that it'll be done in my life. Because I can plan, today is going to be this, today is going to do this, today, today, today. And at the end of the day, something might happen that God just throws a, a different little jet, something in there. And it's like, oh, that jarred me. And, but that's not on my paper. Guess what? So what? It's not on my paper. I know that I don't even belong to me as far as I'm concerned. So I am bought with a price. And so when I do certain things in my life, some things mean that that means that I won't get everything done that I wanted to get done. And hence, it might appear to be imbalanced. And guess what? Sometimes, depending upon the different factors that you have to put into the mix, imbalance is totally balanced from God's perspective, if that makes sense, because it's like what other people may view as the way to get rich and to grow and to win in life. I have to put those and couple those elements with things that I believe spiritually as well. So, so to me, winning at, at the highest level of finances only is not the only aspect to winning to me. So I have to always factor in a variety of components when I'm looking at prioritizing my day. Hope that helps somebody. But, but still, I operate from a business perspective that if I don't put it on my list, I don't get it done. So if it's not on there, there's no chance of it even getting done, whether it's God's will or, or man's will or whoever's will. If it's not on my paper or on my electronic device, it's as good as not happening. So I encourage you to definitely write things down and also make sure that when you're writing things down, make sure you have one master kind of calendar. That's something that I operate on as well. I don't have a calendar for this, a calendar for my children's activities, a calendar for church, a calendar for family. I don't have that. I have one master calendar because the way that I want it to work is I need to know what my day will, what will be the flow of my day versus just any old thing being over here and I don't see it and then something's over there and I don't see it and it's up there. It, okay, that's too many different systems. So I need everything at a glance for me and that works best for me. But as I share tips with you as the balance doctor, keep in mind that everything that works for one person may not work for you. So you have to do what works best for you and your family and your circumstances and your situation. The advice that I give is advice that I know works for me and advice that I've implemented and is over, proven over the years to be effective for my life. But again, as I share tips with other people, you may implement something and say, oh man, that just didn't work for me and my family. Then guess what you have the authority to do? Shift it, change it, make immediate changes and do some things to make it work for you and your family dynamic. And whenever people invite me into their homes to do balance makeovers, I've been sent around different areas by NBC and Fox and people win balance makeovers with Kim Jacobs, the balance doctor. And so when I enter a person's home, which I, when I say I love doing that, I love doing the balance makeovers, but I get to assess the situation. What's currently happening? Where do you kind of see the synergy not happening? 
And then from there, we come up with an action plan. And many of my clients that I've worked with over the years, I see their success stories and I can see like where I'll give you one example. One mother, a single mother, I was brought into her home and she was raising her son. Her son was acting out perfume. I mean, he was un, he was really disturbed as, as far as cursing and saying all manner of things. And he was frustrated with his mom. And he, he was like giving her the business. And I said, you know, I think what I'm observing is that you need to hear him. You need to listen to what he's saying because what he's saying, there's some validity to it. Instead of just saying, oh, he's a teenager, he's uh, it's his hormones and he's out of control. There are some things that he's saying that he needs you as a parent to hear. And when this parent, this mother took the time to listen to what he was saying, she then became his advocate at school. And I'm not saying names or anything unless she decides, you know, to share her story or whatever. But in at the school, she became the advocate for her son. And he, he was getting F's, D's and F's at the time. Guess what? His complete grades turned around, did an abrupt face and became a B honor roll student and just recently got accepted into an Ivy League school. Girl, listen to me. You can't tell me that just by assessing that situation of that family with a single mother who was super frustrated and rightfully so because the son was cursing and doing all manner of stuff and doing whatever he felt he was big enough to do. Now the synergy between the two of them is beautiful and he's now going on to an Ivy League school. So that's one of the clients that I work with and I was able to help them based on the gifts that God gave me. Okay, let's see, any other questions so far? Let me check some more out and by all means you can type some there as well. Let's see. Yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Someone asked how how do you take care of your how can you take care of yourself and as a mother and make sure that you're taking care of you too. Uh, that's a really great question. And being a mother of five, I am a big advocate that you should take care of your your family and take care of their needs. But anybody that knows the whole airplane, getting on the airplane and they, they walk, the stewardess comes on and she says, listen, before you can ever assist the person sitting next to you, whether it be an aging parent, whether it be a child, whether it be your spouse, whether it be your friend that's with you, you have to first deploy your mask, put the mask on, and then make sure your oxygen is, is your, your oxygen level is flowing properly and then you can turn to assist someone else. So my philosophy as the balance doctor pertaining to taking care of yourself is just like you schedule things on your calendar for appointments with your work schedule, appointments with your children and at their activities, appointments with making sure you're doing church work and everything for everybody, you have to also schedule some time for you. Where, what is going to be that carved out time that, hey, I'm getting ready to just take a straight nap. I'll notify people in my household and I'll say, listen, from this time to this time, don't knock on the door <laughs> because it seems now you can tell me if I'm wrong. Every time, every time I attempt to just have that moment to myself. I mean, literally, nobody can bother me for hours. <laughs> nobody. I'm like, where is everybody? Nobody's around, blah, 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 whatever. But guess what? Time I decide that I'm going to say, okay, well, you know what? This is, might be a good moment for me to just get some me time. I mean, door, hello, mom, 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 mom. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my G. <laughs> Why are you knocking on my door right now? I'm just taking a nap. So I believe that you have to schedule the time for yourself. You have to be very intentional with your family and very upfront with your family and say that this little bit of time right here, maybe one hour or two hours, this is something I'm doing for me. Please don't interrupt me because guess what? And I try and paint the picture for my children. 
When you're upstairs playing your games and you're screaming to the top of your lungs on Fortnite or all of these video games, whatever, Ro Roblox and Minecraft, whatever, and you're like all into it, leaning in, talking in the microphone. And if I dare breathe too hard, right? If I just make a mistake and cough, mom, mom, we're on the game. We're in the middle of the game. What, 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 what do you need? What, total stress pandemonium, right? I encourage you to carve out that time, notify your family, and really take that time. The time can be used to read a book. It can be just used to take a bath. It can be used to take a shower. It could be used to just do a nice massage on your massage chair if you have something like that. You can just sit on your porch, in your backyard, in your garage. If you don't have any of those things, you can go to a local park because not everybody have the same circumstances. So you might say, you know what, I don't have all of this stuff that she's saying. Then guess what? You have the ground outside so you can just go outside and put put a chair from somebody's neighbor in the neighborhood if you even live in a, in a housing projects because i grew up in the housing project so i know i know what i'm talking about when i say how it operates that's like a a, a family that's there's no comparison to a housing project inner city family type of thing because everybody kind kind of pulls together and decides, you know what, I got you. We got you. We all looking out for each other. In a lot of instances, the, the, the neighbors will let you borrow stuff and say, okay, you need some sugar. My mom would sometimes send me to my next door neighbor's house and she'd say, go get a cup of sugar or they would come to my house and say, we just need a, uh, we just need a teaspoon of salt, whatever. But it was like a family type of situation. So if you don't have a big garage or a big house, just go out and just get some fresh air in the general public and, and try your best to just do something to make the best of whatever your circumstances and situation is. But regardless, de-stress, relax, find some way to do something that's important and fun for you. If it's going to get your nails done, guess what? That's another thing. Again, because I grew up in the projects, I know how to do nails. I know how to do hair. I know how to do weave. I know how to do eyebrows. I know how to do um, waxing. You, Girl, bye. I know how to do everything I need to do because God has equipped me to be able to do it. Why? Because I had to learn how to do it because of where I was raised and where my surroundings. So I didn't always live in this big place type of thing. I actually grew up in a very impoverished situation, but because I wanted to still you know, hang out with the Joneses type of thing. And my friends were wearing Oscar de la Rentes and Joy Dash and stuff like that in school. Mine, I still wore them. But mine just came from one of my mom's friends um, who just loved me to, to pieces and was like, you know what? I'm going to make sure that Miss Margaret and Miss Wilhelmina, uh, those two women, Miss Margaret and Miss Wilhelmina, they made sure I had some nice hand-me-down pieces. And when I stepped out, I looked good. I looked good. Trust me, my Joy Dash and my uh, Oscar De La Rentes were working too. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew that they came from somebody else's house, that they had washed them and just handed them down to me, which was a blessing from God. So anyway, I'm looking outside right now too. Okay, anyway, so I hope I answered that question. Yes, this is the truth, Valerie, that very much the truth. Hope I answered that question. Let's see. Any other questions so far? You can type your questions. Hey, thank you, Cherie. Cherie gave me this balance mug. <laughs> yeah, I love this mug. It's called balance. So. Oh. Whoosh. How many people just take a few minutes sometimes and just deep breathe? No talking at all. If you're not breathing, <laughs> that's a problem. So make sure that in the course of a given day, you take time to just take a few deep breaths. And even just in saying that, how do you deep breathe? Let's all practice together. That's on here. And, and some of you are on my podcast, so you can only hear me. So I'll walk you through. But I'm, we're going we're gonna to deep breathe together for those that can see the video, okay? So give me a second.
Okay. So what you're gonna do is sit up straight. <sighs> okay. Get your posture right. And then when you breathe in through your nose, your stomach, you can put your hand at the base of your stomach. Your stomach should be protruding when you're deep breathing. Let me see, let me see if I can find some. Hold on one second. Give me one second, because I'm gonna make sure that you get in the mode here of what I'm doing, so. And this is what I, I'll do this. I do this all the time, just because you have to, you have to be able to find a way to just relax. Now, I don't own the right to, I don't own the rights to these songs, so. So, I don't know whose songs these are, but here you go. So you're gonna sit up tall. You're going to breathe in through your nose. When you breathe in through your nose, your stomach is going to actually be, most people think when you breathe in through your nose that your stomach should be sucked in. That's not the case. When you breathe in through your nose, that's when your stomach should actually be poking out. So I'm play some little nature sounds. Hmm. Then you're going to breathe out. And when you breathe out, your stomach Breathe in, all of the weight of the world from your stomach should go out. Just like full gut, just let it loose, okay? Then when you breathe in, exhale, that's when your stomach is sunk in. And do that for about 10 counts, so in, Make sure your shoulders are relaxed. And breathe out. And breathe in. And I'm saying where it goes beyond that shallow breathing, but just like a deep core breath type. And then you breathe out. Exhale. And you can do that, you can do that multiple times a day. So you don't have to just only, you don't, have, you don't have to only do that at a set time. You can just put some relaxation music on, dim the lights. If you have any of those little eye masks where you can rest with those masks on, I don't, I don't put that on, but you can do that. Whatever works for you to get into that mo to your mode, or as people say, your mojo of just being able to just totally wind down and with all of the stress and chaos and things that are happening in life it's so important to get those moments where you say i'm intentionally just making it a conscious decision to relax uh, speaking of let's see give me a second here Someone had asked me this question, uh, and I was on a I was on a one on one coaching session with someone recently, and I'm, I never divulged the names. But on the coaching session, we talked about being intentional, and so let me answer the question about how do you be intentional in life? There are so many options and choices and opportunities. Every day presents new opportunities every single day. It's like it can get overloading and overwhelming. So how do you maneuver through that? What I actually share, one, one thing that I share with the person is to make sure that you ask God. Ask God specifically what your purpose is on this earth. What are you here to accomplish? Why are you put on this earth? 
If you don't know why you're here and what your purpose is, you're just going to walk around aimlessly in the abyss, never knowing exactly what you were created to accomplish. The more you understand who you are and what you're designed to do, then all of the things that you do kind of fall in alignment with that because it's like if it doesn't do what I know I'm supposed to be doing, then I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And even if I did it already and it didn't, and I'm like, I'm not going to keep doing that. So like, I'll give you an example, coronavirus news. I was like, I don't want to do any more coronavirus news. And some, I was crying. I was crying, looking up the data and stuff. I'm like, this is overwhelming to me. I don't, first of all, I don't even want to be, I'm not, I'm not interested in doing this. So even though it's helpful information and that goes along with who I'm created to be, it was like bogging me down and stressing me out just to even come up with the data by doing the research and the amount of hours I was spending trying to do my due diligence to provide you guys with the information. I don't, I don't have to do that, right? Okay, so just, I stopped. <laughs> just go to CNN, go to CBS, go to ABC, wherever, NBC. So if something's not doing good in your spirit and you're, and you're presenting some information and you're like, ah, you know what? I'll just let the news people stick to telling the news and I'll just go back to doing what I'm supposed to do, which is Kim Jacobs, the balance doctor stuff and inspiring people that way. How about that? Everybody just run in your lane and everything works out. But asking God what your purpose is and paying attention because he actually will provide signs to you that you'll start to see, oh, when these things are happening, this is falling in alignment with what I say God has called me to do. So keep in mind, so evaluate and assess your situation. What's worked well for you and what needs to change? Because not everything is working well with what you currently are doing. And as that's the case, whatever in my own life, I already know the things that have not worked well and have gotten me the results that I have today and what I need to do to change those things in order for me to have a better outcome for tomorrow. So we all have to do self-assessment if we want to be intentional. Number two, make sure you com don't compare yourself to other people. When you compare yourself, it helps you, it forces you to feel lesser than someone else. And that's not the point. The point is, uh, actually, I heard a, a lady, uh, her name is Nicola, say that if you're competing with other people, you're officially lessening your confidence. You're lacking confidence because now you're constantly having to try to come up to some other level that that's not even who you are or what you do or what you bring to the universe or to the world. So to compete with other people, stop doing that. Decide what your vision is for you and for your family and roll with that. Number three, have specific tangible goals so that you'll be able to see the purpose and the vision and the value that you bring to your own life. Whenever you start to see the value and what you bring to the universe and to life and to society, then you're like, oh, my intentional actions got me these results. And then get mentors to guide you and to help lead you into areas that you're not fully familiar with. But you know you're supposed to be doing this thing, but you don't know how to do it really. So you need to get mentors in that area. Les Brown is one of my mentors, and he mentors me very well and helps me, in, in, especially with mindset having a certain type of mindset, not a woe is me mindset, but a greatness is within me mindset. That is important to be surrounded with people that can help pull you up to the level that you need to be brought in, in your mind, in your mind. Okay. Prioritize to maximize. If you're going to be intentional in my book, I talk about extreme and extreme balance makeover. A lot of what I talk about is from my own book, Extreme Balance Makeover. Right now, I have it available as an ebook that I can send to you via email and you can download it to your iPhone or whatever electronic devices. And you can have that book for $9.99. It's on Amazon for $14.99 with a Kindle download and an actual um, paperback book. But I am giving this 33% kind of discount thing, especially with people being in the house. If you're interested in getting the if you're interested in getting the actual extreme balance makeover, better focus, better solutions, a better life, then guess what? You can get that. Just inbox me or you can email me at Kim at the balance doctor and doctor spelled out dot TV. And I'll be happy to get that book to you. It's only $9.99 and you can, you, I'll tell you how you can pay for the book and then I'll get it to the actual download to you. All right. Any other questions? Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and get ready to wrap this up. 
but I wanted to come on and just do a Ask Kim segment, and we'll do these. If you have questions and you, you're watching the replay and you know that you didn't get a chance to get your question asked on this seg segment, please make sure you just inbox me or email me, Kim at thebalancedoctor.tv, and I'll get your question answered on the next session. Okay, uh, this last minute of the time here, I want to make sure that I tell you this evening at 8.30 p.m., Cassandra Davis, who is my operations manager, she is going to be speaking as a new author. She is a new author of a book called Women of War, and she's in a collaborative project for this book as one of their contributing authors. And oh, Cassandra, you're going to enjoy her story. You're going to enjoy getting to know her as an author. Today on Deline Musilak's page, I'll make sure I put her name here, Deline, D-E-L-E-N-E, -E -E, and, and her, I already tagged her, M-U-S-I-E-L-A-K, Deline Musilak at 8.30 p.m. If you go to her page, she's going to be doing a live interview with Cassandra Davis. And Cassandra is one of the contributing authors of the book project Women of War, and it's Peace in the Midst of the Storm. And Cassandra is going to talk about her journey and her life and some things that she's going to be just giving you a little tad bit, but you'll have to get the book in order to read her full story that she'll be sharing. So make sure you support Cassandra Davis on this evening, Friday evening at 8.30 p.m. It's going to be a Facebook Live. So for those that are listening to my podcast, know that you'll have to get over to the Facebook uh, outlet, social media outlet, to go to Deline Mushlak, D-E-L-E-N-E-M-U-S-I-E-L-A-K. It's going to be on her Facebook page. And the interview will take place with uh, my business operations manager, Cassandra Davis, who is a new author, and we celebrate her, and we're so <laughs> we're so excited that she is a new author, and she's going to do a great job talking this evening at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Delene's page. All right. Thank you guys for being a part of this Ask Kim segment on the Kim Jacobs Show. Ask your questions. You can ask them in the comment section. If you have not subscribed to The Kim Jacobs Show on YouTube, go subscribe. Go click that subscribe. Turn on your notification. Like and comment and all that stuff that you're supposed to do. Smash the button and all of that, okay? But let's have a good time. I'm here to help you in any way I can. So utilize the help. It's free information that I'm sharing with you. And if it's something that can make your life better, then I want to do it. I want to help put the pieces of the puzzle together and not just take the picture away, dump all the thousand piece puzzle down and walk away with the picture on the box, but I want to leave the box there. And I want to show you how to put the corners together and how to put the centerpieces together. Not because I'm perfect at doing it, because I'm not. I'm not perfect at doing anything. No one, No one's perfect. No one's perfect. But I can tell you some of the experiences I've had, things that I've overcome, to be able to help me become who I am today. There are some things that I, I, I'm excited about, other things that I, I mean like, oh my God, this is just downright embarrassing or downright sad or whatever the case may be, or my, this is heartbreaking or whatever. But there are all different experiences that we all have in life that help to create the, be the people that we are today. And so please allow me to use the many years that God has blessed me to do this and to be able to share it with you to help you some kind of way make your life a little bit easier. All right? God bless you all. Have a fantastic rest of your Friday. Tune in at 8.30 p.m. to Deline Mushalak and watch that interview with Cassandra Davis, new author of Women of War, co-author of Women of War, and that's Peace in the Midst of the Storm. God bless you all, and thank you for tuning in today. I appreciate you. I love you guys, and I'm honored to be able to serve you. God bless you. Bye-bye.